A warm welcome from the Smart Manufacturing Alliance and myself, Tracy Grazioli, the Network Development Manager. We are a membership organisation dedicated to supporting manufacturers in the Cambridgeshire and Peterborough region. Our goal is to foster collaboration, share knowledge and inspire individuals within the manufacturing community. Today, we have our first of a series of special discussions on the topic of mental resilience. Joining us is Mark Jenkins, a senior engineer and director at Huxley Bertram, one of our esteemed members. Mark will be in discussion, conversation, with Patrick Melville, an accredited Mental Health England first aider and public speaker. Over to you, Patrick, to lead the discussion on this very important subject. Yes, I'm so pleased to be having a conversation which is close to everyone's heart and, of course, minds, building mental resilience. Thank you, Mark, for joining us. Hello, Patrick. Hello, Tracy. Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> Pleasure. So let's go straight to it. I would like to start with my first question and hear your thoughts. What have been the main drivers and causes of stress in the industry this year? Um, I, I think this year it sort of goes on a, probably a little bit further back than just this year. But I think two, two key ones for us as a business have been um, you know, the effects of COVID and what that's had, not only on the business, but individuals as well within the business. Um, we've also had some delays to goods, uh, electronic parts in particular with engineering have been a, been a problem to, to source. You know, so getting hold of goods that might have taken weeks have taken over a year to year and a half. And those sort of things put pressures on the workloads, put pressures on project schedules and the deliveries that people you know, signing up to do as part of their job. Um, and that that causes a problem, not only because people are stressing about trying to get their work completed within the schedules, but also um, if the goods aren't there, we haven't got the workload to actually work, which could actually have a, and does have an impact on potential overtime. So whereas certain individuals might sort of relish the, the idea or, or I hesitate to say need overtime, but they get used to working overtime. When there's no overtime, that adds additional financial pressures to individuals. So that those two factors, COVID and sort of sourcing of electronic goods have been pretty key over the last couple of years. The I think the other thing that adds to this is general inflation within you know within the country um and that's across the board not just in the engineering sector mm. but the increased cost of living has a huge impact on on people um their well-being um and you know just the way way they behave and, and react and when they're at, when they're feeling the pinch a little bit yeah and, you know especially especially for the individuals that might have to travel a little bit further to get to work suddenly becomes you know, their costs for travel are, are suddenly extortionate, or way beyond what they uh, expected. So they're, they're, I think that they're the three main stress factors I would put my finger on to start with uh, for individuals. Brilliant. Thank you. And, and it sounds like there's stress drivers which cause more stress. And of course, it's hard to, it's a kind of control number that happens externally in the industry. And is, that's what you kind of, that's what you've been uh, labeling at the moment. Yeah. 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 Brilliant. Absolutely. So I find it, it's very easy to talk about the problems and the issues, but I want to focus also on, you know, what is the ways that the mental resilience has been built in your organization? What have you seen? Well, I think, um, you know, quite early on, when when we saw COVID was was an issue, um, we started to put in place uh, certain uh, things. Uh, one of them is an EAP system, which is an employee assistance program. Mm -hmm. So we uh, invested in in a company, Westfield Healthcare. Not sure I can say that or not. <laughs> you can delete that one. Uh, but that's a, a free helpline for all of our employees that enable them to call. Um, if to discuss any, any of their problems and the problems can be sort of health related so mental or physical health mm -hmm. um, uh, can also be financial or legal matters as well so it's not just associated with their health but those other factors could in, be influencing mental health issues as well mm -hmm. so EAP is one thing we, we put in place yes 
We've also investigated for our first aiders some uh, additional mental health care training, mm -hmm. uh, first aiders, and really that's, you know, um, that training is ident identifying or trying to deal with, you know, uh, giving sort of some competency and confidence within our first aiders um, to be able to really yeah. spot the signs of um, the, uh, the, of individuals that might be struggling a little bit and maybe help with some um, techniques on how to respond and, and help them from from a healthcare sort of sort of point yeah. of view. They're not specialists by any means, but at least they're you know they're, they're there as a, as a sort of a um, you know, looking out for their colleagues as it were. Well, well, that's exactly why it was launched. It's about early intervention. And of course, what they're really doing a lot is that the, the people who are the experts are actually the people who work in the business. So they know what the stress drivers are, don't they? Yeah. They know yeah. what the challenges are. And I think it's learning that language, that trust to be able to do that. And to, I'm, I'm sure from those conversations, it leads to quicker ways to get help and to use that. For example, your EAP work as well. I find sometimes people don't use it. Either they don't know it or they feel they shouldn't. And of course, these first aiders and other groups are able to encourage them. Yeah, I think when you say they sh they feel they shouldn't, I think that's the that's the yeah the, the 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 problem is people don't like to accept or feel that they've got an issue. And I think that's something that you know might maybe been a bit more open and and yeah. understanding will help all round. There's there's a couple of other things actually, Patrick, yeah. when it comes to what Please. we've done and and you know we we um have set aside a, a small budget um to to actually assist financially um the encouragement of staff social activities so mm. we have have um you know various people within the company will get together at various times um to deal with some sort of social group activities like temping bowling um some games nights where we would would you know give some funding towards and even uh not sure if it, you're aware about the cambridge dragon boat competition that was mm -hmm. yeah very famous <laughs> so we we put a team into that and the company supported that and you know so so trying to encourage some sort of team building and 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 sort of you know camaraderie within groups within the business yeah and it sounds like it's bespoke that's one of the key things which is every organization every team and every individual is different and the fact that you put it together based on the, the passions for your teams and of course through that relationship sounds sounds fantastic and i i'm i'm, I'm sure it doesn't matter necessarily if you win or not no absolutely yeah it's, and, and it's well. the, you know the, it's the team it's that the group of individuals decide themselves what they want to do so that's it's, it's their own interests yes yeah. we're not Puts it pushing anything onto anyone <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds like you're doing a, a good balance between what what i call being reactive to anyone who's got troubles like a mental health first aider to having uh, being proactive you're helping people yeah. through sharing and i'm sure there are some amazing conversations that happen there's a classic thing you know with going outside the meeting room sometimes the most important meeting um and the important conversations are around the the coffee cool yeah maybe, maybe going to the to cambridge to do that race as well as other times can, can i ask another question about you know it's it's one of the softer sides of mental health and well-being how to justify it and i know it's a cost it's a cost in time it's a cost in budget as well is it worth it and i know this is coming more to the forum with companies but how do you how do you justify it in any way i mean i are there any ways or softer ways that that come up that you use? Um, well, the, the, for the justification side of things, I think, you know, that you get straight away, you get the uh, staff appreciation that the company is supporting them. So there's there's that. And uh, that then lends itself, I think, a little bit to, and it's really, you ca can't quantify this, but staff retention. Mm. So retaining your staff, you know, we have a, um, a culture here, I, I guess, where um, we want people to want to come to work. We try to provide an interesting, um, yeah, exciting workplace for people, so so that people enjoy coming to us. We're we're quite fortunate as an engineering company that we're we are truly engineering led. Yeah. So 
you know, myself as a team of seven directors and six of us are engineers and, and the, you know, of, of, of the yeah. of six, we're all very um, much hands on and enjoy the engineering. That's part of what we do in, we, we, we like to be involved with interest in engineering. We yes. like to make the work we do interesting. So a bit, bit of an engineer's playground for, for most people. Yes. Could you um, ask about that? So, so I'm asking you about, you know, the interest. How do you get that passion you know, to help them to come in? What's the engineering angle do you, that comes to mind? Uh, to, to, be, to be honest, um, if, if somebody's gone into engineering it, it, themselves, there's, there's a reason behind it. And it's because, you know, they took used to take their parents' toasters or kettles apart and try and yep. rebuild them with very little success probably, or their bikes, cars, yeah. motorbikes, those those sort of people that are interested. The big one recently, really, I guess, is 3D printing. And you get a lot of people being able to go and buy their own 3D printers or even yeah. print, print parts to build their own 3D printer. So, so once you've got one, you can just keep going. Um, those, yeah. sort of, those, those people, those technical people that are, have a, a real interest um, for engineering t t tend to just find us i guess yes yes and 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 that word really the word that comes to mind is curiosity from a very young age it's not a new word but it's so relevant now that curiosity and of course in the manufacturing industry in, in the engineering side there's that curiosity and how can fine tuning and go into the area and of course it's a lovely angle in our minds you know everyone is different everyone has their own focus don't they and i think it's yeah, yeah. finding that in your group building that if I can put an analogy, some sort of infrastructure, literally your physical body that you put together. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that, that, there are a couple of other points, you know, yeah. you know why would we invest and, and, and put money into this? We might uh, talked about, you know, the appreciation of staff and potential retention. Mm -hmm. um, the other two aspects of this is whether you can use it as a proactive thing for recruitment. So, you know, you talk about it whilst you're recruiting and such yes. a company and, and the way we, we like to look after our staff. Yes. Uh, also, and I'm not sure we I'm not sure we do this at all at the moment, but I'm sure there's probably scope somewhere for us to, you know, um explain to our clients, you know, that whilst we're trying to yeah. get a, get across to a new business and new clients of what type of company we are that, you know, we are positive in supporting our staff. So mm -hmm. I think that will probably have a positive outcome further down down the road where, you know, you want to be working with people that are looking out for the people that are working for them. Yes, that's I a really that's good, life. that's a really good thing because mental health is at the core, Men the mind is at the core. And I think if you just label it, for example, previously it used to be men, men, um, uh, Mental Health Awareness Week in May, that was it. I mean, I was told, don't talk to us until then. And now you've brought in into every single area. And you're right, marketing. I think it's a good world because, you know, it's it's justifiable to say it's a pretty stressful industry, but we're prepared. We're prepared yeah. to manage yeah. it, as you were saying. Um, and it'll be interesting to know, and hopefully I'm sure some of the, the viewers would like to know as and when, um, how, that, how, how that applies. And of course, the client side, um, if, if I can ask, what, what's the plan with them to know about this? Is 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 it something that 2024 maybe or? Yeah, I, I I don't know. I think this is um, quite a quite a new area that's sort of growing rather rapidly. About you know just just the sheer awareness hmm. uh, of bringing that awareness up to every sort of area of the business not just within the business, not within different departments, not just when you're recruiting and, and, mm. and pushing it out to your suppliers and, and clients, but it's just, you know, it, it's something that I think we need to continue um, the understanding and the awareness within within the company itself. Um, we need to, um, you know, and understand ourselves what, what benefits that might give us mm. to people outside the company. And and like you say, the marketing side of it might certainly be a, an area that we could look at. Um, yeah. So we're also, you know, look, looking internally at, at further mental health care training for people. So it's OK, perhaps having, you know, uh, one or two first aiders aware um, of it. You know, there's the managers and, and just your 
in other individuals and you know, groups within the company just just raising this i think could could benefit every, uh quite a few areas and a few people it's, it's sort yeah. of a, a, a dark secret for some people kept in the yeah. background um and i some you know and, and i get it everyone's different and they don't want to share all their 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 background stories uh i get that but when an individual um, <laughs> might have a problem that is influencing their performance at work, uh, their ability or their interaction with others. Yes. Then it might be worth, you know, look, looking at discussing that with somebody within the business to help to help others understand as well. You know, understand what what people might be going through. Yes, yes, and 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 it's, it's interesting, and it's always been a marketing tip when you're trying to talk to someone. It's all about how they how they say things, and their physical size. So it's not just the the words themselves. It's seven percent apparently in some research of the influence. The rest of it is, as I was saying, and it's understanding that. So when someone says I'm fine, how do they say it? Do they do they mean what they say? Do they just actually want to get on with something? And it's and that, that's that's kind of looking into everyone to to be able to do that and and to build the culture together. You know, you're only as good yeah. as your slowest employee. <laughs> but that's yeah. lovely to know. And as we look at 2024, what are your thoughts about wh where things are going? And I'd love to hear. Um, so uh, it's it's a hard one. I mean, big I, one. I don't actually, I don't actually see see things changing very much mm -hmm. in industry um, over the next sort of 12 months i think we're still going to be um in in the aftermath of of covid and and in yeah. you know, the parts and instability or people's um uncertainty you know businesses uncertainty um that going forward that leads to uncertainty in security and people's working within particular companies there might be some uncertainty there i i think that the um as i say the general awareness of mental health um just just will continue to to grow um uh, and i think that will certainly help in certain areas of business Brilliant. But, you know but there there are other out external factors that we'll never get a handle on as i say inflation for one yes you know, yeah what's, what's happening in the big wide world i know i think the big word is is control and I think that's that sometimes it's it's quite easy to focus on what we can't control. Generally, the organizations in manufacturing I've worked with and others, mm. it's 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 trying to make a put a lot of time into making a slight difference instead of focusing on stuff they can control, which does have an eventual impact. Um, and of course, 2024, you're right, it's it's a new year, new outcomes as well. But yeah. stuff can be built, can't they? Like as we come to Christmas just saying thank you is not a hard cost to make and for people to say to each other thank you and to bring into 2024 is yeah. a way um and of course if there was one piece or several pieces of advice you wanted to share with the viewers what would it be sort of in the in, in the industry yeah i think there's probably several <laughs> please yeah i think um you know it's 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 been a tough few years for everybody so um you know, if you're feeling a little bit worn down, then you're probably not alone. You know, there's a, lots of people probably, you know, you won't see it or understand it or know it. Uh, but, you know, this it's been a tough few years for, for a lot of people, I think. Um, sharing your issues with others could help, you know, especially if you feel that they are, as I said earlier, affecting possibly your performance or social interactions. You know, talk to people, talk to your HR within work, talk to... Mm -hmm. And your first aid is if they've got that sort of sort of mental health awareness and maybe your manager, um, you know, if, if you think these things are, are maybe affecting you and, and within your work environment, it's worth sharing a little bit, I think. Um, so being a little bit open and honest with people, you know, people can be compassionate and, and you know, can have empathy. So, um, you know, be, being patient with others as well because it might not just be yourself that's struggling um under being understanding supportive and having that empathy i think is re is really key yes uh, to you know keeping good 
working relationships going within within your working environment um, and keep an eye out for others who you feel might be struggling but as as we said we're not experts um so you know it's hard to understand what to look out for with a little bit more education and awareness yeah maybe that will help i like those points and i think what the what they're very toned on is this resilience theme it's about resilience is about coping quicker and that comparative word is so strong it's not the only way to recover from a worry but resilience builds that foundation and of course it's through those areas like sharing just talking there's a classic one where you just if you just talk it automatically can de-stress because it takes away it, you know your mind will clog up and be very cluttered by just talking about it and of course with a trusted source you know uh, maybe not with a client is your first conversation um but or maybe but again you understand that relationship and keeping an eye out for others you know that yeah. kind of question how are you i am fine you know it's understanding what that means and going into that deeper just building that culture together which sounds like in the manufacturing industry it's being done slowly but that's well the good thing is that there's movement it's you know we we love to yeah we're working on it <laughs> we're getting better <laughs> and of course there'll be other companies as well who i'm sure will be interested to know so i those are my main main questions and i think we've come to the end is there anything else you want to share have come to mind or, or uh, uh not not over and above what i've already said without repeating myself but um yeah it's uh it's an interesting time and i think a little bit more awareness would, would help all around yeah brilliant well mark thank you so much for taking the time to come along and i hope that um the the viewers will take some things away from that feel free to get in touch with Tracy or myself for any other questions we want to bring this service into the industry and to help with exactly as Mark said performance not just with mental health but also in marketing recruitment and commercial side as well thank you very much Mark you're welcome uh, you. last words for Tracy do you want to say something no it's, it's all really interesting you haven't times changed that we were all so, so much more caring about other individuals so it was great mark thank you very much found it very informative and you're doing a great job at huxley bertram really impressed thank you, thank you. and thank you patrick really yeah thank you patrick it. take care Cheers.